How can we adequately compare electronic groove box devices when they are often so different? That's the challenge I've assigned to myself, and this video is a step along the way on that journey. I recently made a video where I composed and performed the same groove on five different groove boxes, and that was fun. I also made a completely different type of video where I visually explained the workflow and behavior of patterns and scenes on the Teenage Engineering EP133 KO2. Not as much fun to make because it was so detailed, but people definitely found it useful. So I started making another video where I tried combining the visual explainer style with making the same groove on a few different groove boxes, and as I created the groove on the EP133 first and then the Roland SP404 Mark II, I got a bit stuck in the whole concept of comparing groove boxes. How can I compare these devices when some of the most basic workflow concepts seem subtly different but have a very large impact on workflow? So this video is a step along the way. I'll compare the EP133 and SP404 Mark II and present some of the visual explainer concepts that perhaps I can use with many other devices to put them on a level playing field. The main concept behind the visual explainer is trying to make sense of the structure of making sounds and patterns on these all-in-one groove box devices. I mean, there are so many devices like this, but they all have their own personality and design. And there are categories like the sampler calculator style, like the EP133 and the SP404. And then there's the DAW multi-track style, very different, like the Synthstrom Deluge and the Polyon Play and Play Plus. And then there's the traditional Rowland sequencer style, like the MC-303 and the Korg Volkas. And those sort of morphed into another style, the drum machine style of Rowland, like the MC-707 and the MC-101, and even the IRA Compact series more recently. And then there's some that just don't fit the mold, like the new Yamaha Seek track and the super unique Teenage Engineering OP-1 field. I'm convinced there's a better way to describe how each works with some common language and visuals to the others in this larger groove box category. So I started with the relationship of each structural element. Let's start with the EP-133. First, there are projects, then tracks, or as they call it, groups. And then within those groups or tracks are sounds and patterns. Of course, inside those patterns, there are steps which are organized into bars. On the SP404 Mark II, we also start with projects, but there are no tracks or groups. There's no limitation or segmentation of how the sounds can be used. There are, of course, sounds within projects and patterns. And of course, within those patterns, there are also steps measured in bars. Now, the trick is, Beside that not all the groove boxes use the same language, of course, they also don't put together these structures with the same intent and constraints, and that's part of what makes the workflows different. And they also have different constraints and capacity at each of these levels. So let's get into that. On the EP133, you're allowed to have nine projects on the device at any given time. And each of those projects can have four groups or does have four groups or tracks as a top level structure in every project. Then within each group, you can have a set of 12 sounds and you can create up to 99 patterns, but only within each group. So you get 99 patterns per group or track that can contain those 12 sounds in that track. Then one pattern in each group can be played simultaneously with a pattern from each of the other groups. So on the EP133, four patterns can play simultaneously. And you can change one of the patterns in one of the groups while leaving the other patterns from the other groups playing. So you're like mixing and matching four patterns at one time, one from each of the four groups. And within each pattern, you get up to 99 bars with four steps. That means 396 steps within each pattern. Now, the SP404 has 16 projects, and I call it 16 plus because the SP404 is good at offloading single projects and reloading single projects from the SD card. It's a real benefit compared to the EP133, which you can only archive all projects or reload all projects. You can't do it one project at a time yet as of April 2024 firmware. So the SP404 has 16 projects on the device and does not have the concept of tracks or groups, but you get a huge pile of sounds organized into 10 sound banks. 16 sounds in each of 10 banks, so a total of 160 sounds available for any pattern. And you can create up to 160 patterns using any of those sounds across the whole pile. 
Now, any given pattern can be up to 64 bars, which of course, with four steps per bar, means 256 steps in each pattern. Now, since there are no tracks or groups on the SP404 limiting which sounds you can use in a pattern, you can't and you shouldn't need to play more than one pattern at a time. Now, this might imply a big workflow difference and maybe even a constraint, perhaps. On the EP133, you can build up a pattern playing a different set of patterns from each group, while on the SP404, you might save patterns as you compose and add sounds in subsequent patterns to build them up. Now, one big feature and workflow difference on the SP404, you can resample patterns into single pads to basically play more than one pattern at a time. But that's a whole nother level of sophistication and pretty impossible to represent on the simple diagram. But you can see on the visual how each of these devices gives you power in your workflow in very different ways. Now, if we zoom back out to the project level, which seems most devices use that same language, project at the top level, we can see that the EP133 with four groups and 12 sounds basically has 48 sounds available to play within any project, and the SP404 has 160 sounds to play in any project. We can also see that the EP133 has scenes. Scenes are pre-made combinations of patterns across each of the four groups, while the SP404 does not have scenes, but it has pattern chains, which I'm calling songs. And you can have 16 songs per project made up of 16 patterns each. Now the EP133 does not have songs and the SP404 does not have scenes. Now, remember on the SP404, we can also resample. Think of that as recording these patterns or pattern chains to a single pad. And with a 16 minute limit per sample, you can really go far creating long songs of complex combinations of patterns. Even though at the high level, it seems you can only play one pattern at a time. Resampling changes all of that. So that's the high level visual of the workflow and sound structure and pattern structure elements of these devices. Now there's one more level deep, but I'm struggling to find a way to represent these as sometimes they're called ticks per step and sometimes they're called substeps and they can mean very different things. So I'm generally staying away from ticks, which is very technical as a breakdown of each step and instead thinking about the audible version of that, which is substeps. On the EP133, you get those by holding down the timing button when you're recording, and you can have up to 32 substeps because it goes to 30 seconds. And on the SP404, you get it by holding the roll button, and you can get up to 64 substeps per step or 64ths. Now, this graphic hopefully helps, but I realize there are so many other elements of the device that deserve to be compared, especially for someone trying to decide, is the extra $200 worth the features for me? And while this is often a personal preference based on how you create and perform music, I figured it's worth mentioning the big differences that I found beyond these structural differences that clearly differentiate these instruments. So let's go through some of those and note that these are just the ones that I found to be important. There are so many other features, particularly on the SP404, that I'm not even mentioning. But first, of course, the price difference, $200 difference between the $300 price tag of the KO2 EP133 and the $500 price tag of the SP404 Mark II. One of the biggest differences between these devices is memory capacity. How many samples, how much memory do you have to store samples? And on the KO2, they proudly actually put it right on the front of the device, 64 megs. That's not that much. Now, for a device that you're gonna use to just lay down ideas and play on the road. It's actually, I found enough to make some really impactful music, but it's not enough to go the next level. And on the SP404, you get 16 gigabytes, which is a lot. And so you'll see in some of the other metrics, it actually has an impact on what else can be stored. Polyphony is the next big difference. 12 voice versus 32 voice. I have found on the KO2 EP133, when I've got a complex set of patterns playing, I lose some of my notes because the 12 voice limit is hit and it eats away at what can be played. Whereas on the SP404, I have never experienced that with 32 voices that can play simultaneously. The other limitation is a 20 second sample limit per pad, which on the KO2 is actually a little deceiving because even though you have a 20 second sample limit per pad, if you tried to sample 20 seconds on every pad in every group, you might actually first hit the 64 meg limit of memory. And on the SP404, it's a 16 minute sample limit per pad, which means you can almost record full songs on a pad and play them simultaneously or in the background. And it's really incredibly powerful. 
Now, one advantage for the KO2 EP133, clearly, at least in my case, is traveling. It's much lighter weight and smaller. It's only one pound, six ounces and one inch high, whereas the SP404 Mark II is two and a half pounds, pretty much, and two and three quarter inches high, which means it's a little bit different the way it fits in your backpack or in your travel bag. Now, not having a song mode on the EP133, I think, is a big limitation, but it doesn't mean you can't perform live and actually chain patterns manually and then record that. That actually is how I use the device. But on the SP404, you have a song mode and you can chain patterns and play them back in chains. And you can have 16 of those per project, 16 pattern chains. And within each um, pattern chain, you can have 16 patterns. Now, the KO2133 does have some effects, but not a lot. It's not very powerful. So there's a limit to what kind of effects you can use as master effects. And the punch-in effects are actually quite fun and powerful. But if you look overall, I would say it's got some effects, but not powerful. Whereas the SP404 has plenty of effects, very powerful. It's got four effects buses. It's got a tremendous selection of effects and they're easy to access. And because you can resample, you can actually resample the effects into the pads on top of patterns or pattern chains or even on top of samples and then have access to stacking up effects. On the KO2, you also cannot resample, whereas on the SP404, you can resample. You can do so much with resampling. You can resample samples, you can resample patterns, and you can resample pattern chains onto single pads. Save and load of projects. The best thing about both these devices is it's auto saving. So when you're working on a project, it does save the project state as you work. You don't have to worry about losing your work if you turn the device off. But on the KO2, you cannot actually offload single projects or reload single projects. You have to archive all nine projects at once or reload all nine projects at once. Whereas on the SP404, you can do it one at a time to the SD card, which has plenty of capacity. Another big difference is waveform editing. So sample editing on the KO2 is only audible. You don't really get a visual of the waveform at all. You have to just listen for the right spot. Whereas on the SP404, you get a visual waveform edit and you can select the start end and loop points. Similar visual difference on step sequencing. There is no visible step sequencing on the KO2, really. You can go to a step by pressing the plus and minus button to get to the right step and then see which pads or which sounds are being played on that step. But you cannot see if you pick a pad or a sound which steps it's on in one fell swoop, which is typical of how Roland machines work. On the SP404, you can actually see each of the steps and which pads are on each step or pick a pad and see which steps that pad is on. And of course, one of the biggest limits for me, especially since I like to sample guitars, you need two hands to sample on the Teenage Engineering EP133. You have to hold the pad. I think that will be one of the first things we see changed in the firmware. But right now, I really cannot play a two-handed instrument and sample it on the KO2, whereas on the SP404, it has threshold triggers for sampling. So I can set a trigger and say, as soon as you hear the sounds, start sampling, and I can play with two hands happily and then end the sample and then edit visibly. So there are definitely benefits there. So that's some of the big differences. I think it's important to understand that there are many features, particularly on the SP404 that I'm not mentioning, like plugging my guitar directly in using the quarter inch jack with a separate gain control, live looping, which was added with the new 404 firmware, simple synth sound generation also from the 404 update and more. And there are some things on the EP133 I just love that I didn't mention, like the built-in mic and speaker, punch in effects, which are so easy to use and combine during a performance. The EP133 at $300 and the SP404 Mark II at $500 might be a tough choice to make. I will say that overall, if you want a lightweight, easy to carry device, which makes it easy to quickly lay down some beats and song ideas, and you aren't looking for a powerhouse all-in-one studio device, and you don't need loads of large samples, and you don't worry about limited polyphony holding you back, the EP133 is a great instrument for $300, and I really enjoy using it. And 
if you want an all-in-one powerhouse with huge amounts of storage for samples and projects, loads of voice polyphony, extensive effects, sample pattern and pattern chain resampling, sample editing, and you plan on interfacing to other instruments, perhaps downloading stems to Ableton easily, and want deeper performance features, DJ mix mode, live looping, even simple sound creation beyond your samples, the SP404 Mark II is an incredible value at $500. Expect to spend more time learning the SP404 than the EP133, but admittedly, the EP133 has some quirks, which also has some learning curve, even for some basics at first. The SP404 learning curve is more about depth of features, as they really pack this thing full with the newest version 4.04 release as of April 4th, 2024. Whatever you decide, you're going to have some fun.